Hey everyone, Vegetarian Zombie here. I want to welcome you back to this tutorial on Twine. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be covering variables. Now, if you're a developer and you work in computer languages, this is going to be old hat for you. So I highly suggest you check out the Twine documentation. And it's really written for developers and they cover all the things that you can do with variables and all the different ways and so forth. And that's really what you're looking for. This series is designed for non-developers. So um, my goal or my intention is that to get you up and running as quick as possible. I'm making the assumption that you have no development experience whatsoever. So let's get into variables. Well, what are variables? Well, you've used them your entire life. The easiest way we can bring an example up is from your algebra class in high school. Let's take a simple problem. Let's say x equals 2 and y equals 3. Well, what does z equal if z is equal to x plus y? Well, we know x is 2 and y is 3, so that means z would equal 5. x, y, and z are variables. They hold data. And we can do this in Twine as well. We can create variables to store numbers, or we can even do that to store text. And you can use them for a whole multitude of reasons. Let's say you have a game and you want to keep track of how much health the player has. And then they walk into an obstacle. And then what happens is that they start losing health. And by the end, they die. Or let's say you want to have an inventory management system. They see something on the ground, they pick it up, and now they'll keep that item in their inventory. So it's really, really powerful tool for you to really make your game just that much more interactive and immersive. When Twine, if you don't really get into the development side and you just make it as sort of a choose your own adventure style, well, you can do that and those games are really fun, but as you add more, as you add some more depth to the game, your players are going to really appreciate that and reward you with that by reading some of your other interactive fiction adventures. Okay. So with that said, what I'm going to do is create a game and I'm going to be using this game just as throughout the, this course of little, uh, the little twine tutorials. So we're just going to keep on building onto it, adding more and more features as we explore all the things that you can do with twine. So if you want to follow along, definitely feel free. I'm going to take it at a slower pace and stuff, and you're welcome to download this or copy, use it, pass it on and so forth. Okay. So I'm just going to use this online. And I'm going to create a game. And you can see here's our creepy game. So let's just get rid of that. Delete forever. See ya. Okay, so I'm going to create a new story. And we're going to call this Derelict. So this game, I'm thinking you wake up and you're aboard a space station in the far future where there's artificial gravity and stuff. And the space station is derelict. And you don't know that. You just think you said goodnight to everyone. You went to sleep. And you, wake, you woke up and no one's around and this station is completely maybe in a decaying orbit or something. So you have to get out of the station. That's the object of the game. And as we go through this game, we'll come up with various puzzles to use and we'll emphasize to go through all of Twine's really cool features. So let's call this Derelict. We're just going to click Add. And here we are, the start, the beginning of everything, Untitled Passage. So remember, we can click on this pencil icon to actually start writing, or we can just double click it. And that's what I tend to do. All right, so I'm gonna give this passage a sleep. This is gonna say you're gonna wake up from something. So I'm just gonna write, I'm just going to add this little passage. So here's my little prose here. Even in sleep, you find the gentle buzz of all the computers, cooling system, and oxygen scrubbers to be reassuring. Yet, even in sleep, something is off. Your dreams feel lighter, like a balloon being set free. So the idea is that you are in a weighted environment, and now the, the artificial gravity is failing. So now you're feeling yourself growing weightless. But you don't quite understand this. So let's give the player a couple options. One, we're going to have open your eyes. 
And this is going to create a new passage called Open Your Eyes. And we're going to say the next one's going to be Sleep. So let's say it's like, I don't really want to fall asleep. I mean, I don't really want to wake up. So I'm going to give the user the ability to sleep. So we're going to close this. And you can see here we have two additional passages. OK, so let's check, let's check out the sleep. Let's add this passage here. So here we have the second passage. You close your lids tight, embracing the whirlwind of drowsiness, and yet, as you fall deeper into slumber, you feel even lighter. So again, the artificial gravity system is failing, so your body is be beginning to float. So I'm going to give the, the player a couple more options. We'll give them the ability to sleep even more. And then, and you can see here, this sleep is just referencing this own passage. So the user keeps hitting sleep. They're just going to be hitting this passage over and over and over again. So why is that useful? I'll show you that in just a moment. Now let's return to open your eyes. Now if we come back here, you can see this little line here indicating that this is a looping. You can see like the arrow right here points right into sleep. So we can see that this is a looping, a looping passage. And then we come back over here to open your eyes. So let's add a passage here. Yep. So here's my passage. Your eyes crack open, breaking a seal of gunk, we'll say welded in place from eight hours of sleep. And at this point, I'm not going to add any more passages. This is just going to be the beginning of the game so far. So let's just run this. So we're going to run this. Actually, we'll go down to play here. And you can see even in sleep, you find the gentle buzz. We've already read that. So we can click on open your eyes, your eyes crack open, and so forth welded in place for our eight hours worth of sleep. Okay, let's try this again. Now we're gonna to go to sleep. We'll go to sleep, your lids close tight. I'm just gonna sleep again, and I'm just gonna keep on hitting sleep. So I'm sleeping all this time now, and now I'm just gonna open my eyes. And we can see here, the time is still, still the change. Well, it's still the same. Well, what I want this to happen is when the user clicks the sleep here, we should advance that by eight hours, uh, by one hour. So if the user hits three times, then they will have slept an additional three hours. To do this, we're gonna create a sleep variable, and we're gonna put it in here. Since we're the variable is going to be accessed here, and we'll access in here, we're gonna set it in here, so both of them will be aware of it. So I'm just gonna double click this here, and now I'm gonna create the syntax for my variable. And the way I do this is I put a parentheses, and then I type set and then a colon. And this is important. If you don't add the colon, it's just going to print out this text that I'm writing now. And now I'm going to give my variable a name. So I'm just going to call this hours asleep. And I'm going to preface it with a dollar sign. And that's just convention. You have to add that there. That's required by Twine. So I'm going to put set hours of sleep to eight. Just like that, and I'm going to close parentheses. So what this is doing is taking this, creating this variable that I'm calling hours, hours asleep, excuse me there, and then I'm setting it to a value of eight. Now, if I come here, we're going to change this. We want to replace this with our variable. So I'm just going to delete this, and now I'm just going to put my dollar sign there, and I'm going to put hours asleep like so. So now that we have that there, this is good to go. So let's run this. And we're going to open your eyes. And you can see here, it looks exactly the same, except in this case now, we're using our variable instead of hard coding it. So let's close this out. And if we come down to test, and now we go to open your eyes and let's click this debug view here. You can see here, this 
eight along with this hours of sleep. So we can see that we're getting this value from this variable. Now let's come to the sleep. Now we want to increment the hour, the, that hours of sleep by one. So we're going to use the same set syntax, but we're going to pass in what is known as an expression. An expression is just, is just a calculation. And remember previously I mentioned x plus y, z equals x plus y. That's essentially what we're doing. So we're going to use the same format, the same syntax, and I'm going to put parentheses, and I'm going to go set, and I'm going to do colon, and now I'm going to do hours of sleep, two, and now I'm going to do hours of sleep. Okay, this may look a little strange. Basically, if you want to think about this, think about this value equals eight. So I'm setting this value equals eight to this value equals eight. So if I just close this off here, I would be setting hours of sleep to the same value of hours of sleep. That's not very useful. But what I can do is add a plus one. Now, this value hours of sleep equals hours of sleep eight plus one. So this would be nine or 10 or 11 and so forth, depending what the original value of hours of sleep was assigned. So let's check this out. Let's go back to a sleep. Actually, let's just play. And we're going to go to sleep. And now you close your tights, you close your eyes lids tight. So we're going to sleep and we're going to sleep and we're going to sleep. Now we're going to open our eyes. Your eyes crack open, breaking a seal of gunk welded in place from 12 hours of sleep. So there you can see variables in action. Now, typically in this kind of situation, I wouldn't allow the user to keep on hitting sleep, 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 because after a while it's, it'd be excessive. Let's say they did it 24 times and you slept, you would say you slept something like 32 hours or something like that. And that's just a little bit over the top. So in another video, we're gonna be covering how to set conditions and how to check on what your variables are set. And then you can create branches off of that. And again, I'll be covering that in another tutorial, but I hope you've got an idea of how variables work in Twine. This is a very, very easy, easy, easy implementation in a very easy way to understand how things work. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment and I will get back to you uh, whenever I read it and so forth. Well, thanks for watching this and I hope it was of use. See you soon.